Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbilalamin. Assalatu wassalamu wa anbiya wal mursalin. Allahumma salli ala sayidina Muhammad wa ali makhluk wal qadri ma sabaq. Nasrul haqq bi haqq wa hadil siratal mustaqim wa ala alihi haqqan daril azim. Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh everyone. May peace be upon you wherever you are. We pray that uh, you are in good health, well-being. And insyaAllah in good iman in this blessed man of Zul Hijjah. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessing, mercy, guidance uh, that we are here today again uh, on Saturday morning in Singapore, 12 p.m. in Singapore. But uh, for Imam Talud, we'll be at night in Mexico, mashallah. How technology uh, connect us and how we see the mercy of Allah uh, that the whole world are actually connected in worshipping Allah in every second, 10 minutes, mashallah. So alhamdulillah, and uh, we are continuing today again uh, from the kitab of uh, Shaykh Al-Arabi Ibn Sa'i Al-Tijani by our beloved Imam Talud Dawood. It's a continuation. And uh, for those who um, want to send in your question after Imam uh, uh, class, you can message this number, 906-87106. Right, without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Imam Talud to begin the online class. Hafadol Imam. Bismillah. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahmanirrahim. Malik Yom Middin, Allahumma Sali Ala Sayyidina Muhammad al Fatih Hidima Ulika, Wal Khati Minima Sabaka Nasir al Haki Bil Haki, Wal Hadi Ida Surati Kumustakim, Wa Ala Ali Haka Padri Hiwa Mikdari Hin Alim, Allahumma Allahumma and Fa'ana Rima, Allahumma Alimna Bang and Fa'ana, when Fa'ana Rima to Alimuna was it Nam and Fadlika Alman Wat Aliman. إنك على كل شيء قدير ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وحيئنا من أمرنا رشدا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. okay آه آه يا حمة الشيخ يا حمة نحن نعطينا نظرة تعطينا بالظفر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. okay we're going to continue إن شاء الله with our reading together. I don't like to say that I'm teaching. Uh, we are reading together um, the book of Sidi Al Arabi bin Sayyid uh, called Bulgat al Mustafid. Uh, and uh, we have reached, uh, mashallah, we, we did the, the section on the knowledge of the Sufis and the source of that knowledge. And we also, uh, alhamdulillah, we. we um, were able to uh, reach to complete the section also that had to do with the importance of adab on the path. And we were able to also, by Allah's leave, we were able to uh, complete the section that was on the adab that one has to have with Allah's presence. And so, we're going to continue, inshallah, and um, we're going to go to the fourth topic, which is on some of the etiquettes of companionship and brotherhood required of the disciple and an explanation of the loyalty and perfect chivalry that is required in that. And so before we go into this, we, we need to understand that Islam in uh, in Islam, different relationships have different rights. And so we work from the, the idea that the most basic rights of every Muslim over another Muslim uh, are six, as mentioned in uh, a hadith of Abu Huraira, narrated in Muslim. Um, there's another hadith that says there are five, you know, but, but the, other, the one that says six is more encompassing of the rights of the Muslims. And so for, so we have to understand, you know, that Allah 
made these different relationships and he placed between those relationships rights and duties. And so some of those are the duty that, that you owe every single Muslim, no matter what. And that means that people of the Qibla, I don't, I don't want to get into whether they're people of Bid'ah or not or anything like that. If they are Muslim, you owe them these six rights. You know, um, and then there are rights that your family has over you, whether they are Muslim or not. And then your Muslim family has all six of the Muslim rights, and then they have added rights, you know, um, which you have to keep contact with them. You have to treat them well. You have to start your charity with them. These are these are the part of the rights of your Muslim family. And then beyond that, your friends who are Muslim, they have rights too. And so these are above and beyond the rights that every Muslim has. And then your, you know, when you enter a path or, you know, a spiritual path or a tariqah, then all of your, your brothers in that tariqah, your fellow disciples, your fellow murids, they have certain rights and you have certain duties to them and they have certain duties to you. And then, you know, also the sheikh who are you are under, you have certain duties to him and certain rights. And so right now, you know, we're, we're going to go into the first, we're going to take a look at the rights of every Muslim. And we're not going to deal with the other relationships today. Um, it, here in this topic, you know, uh, Sidi al Arabi bin Sayyid, he will, he, uh, he will deal with something that has to do with uh, the rights of friendship, um, but it, he will only touch on that. And we're going to focus, after discussing the rights of a Muslim, we're going to focus on, um, beyond that, the rights of your fellow disciples on the path, because this is, this is one of the utmost things. Uh, Sheikh Ahmed Tijani radiallahu anhu, said that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to him and he uh, he exhorted him, he, he advised him to tell his muris not to abuse one another, tell his muris not to hurt one another. And this is something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam emphasized to him. And so the rights of your brother, brethren on the path are of utmost importance. And so, uh, First, what are the six rights of every Muslim? You know, um, if you know the first six rights of every Muslim is that you greet him and return his greeting. You know, so if you meet him, then you say assalamu alaikum or you or any one of the, the, the greetings where you, you may add some things. And if he greets you, then you say wa alaikum salam. This is the first right of a Muslim. The second right of a Muslim is that you say Yarhamukullah when he sneezes. You know, so if he says Alhamdulillah after he sneezes, then you say Yarhamukullah. May Allah have mercy on you. And, uh, or may Allah bless you, or you can even translate it as uh, may Allah bless you. The third right of a Muslim is that that uh, you accept his invitation. So if you have no other excuse and he invites you to, to an event, he invites you to a wedding, for example, wedding banquet, then you go if you have no other excuse, you know, because he is your Muslim brother. Uh, the the uh, fourth is that you visit him when he is sick. You know, so if you learn of a Muslim brother that you, you know, you know, and he becomes ill, then you visit him when he's sick. If you are unable to visit him, then you make dua for him. Um, but in our time, you know, our, you know, Allah has facilitated some things, you know, whereas people may not have been able to visit their loved ones in the past and, you know, feel their physical presence. Allah has facilitated some things for us. And so we can pay a visitation you know, although it would be less than the the uh, 
our presence, but we can pay a visitation to our Muslim brother who is sick, one, you know, through uh, giving him a phone call. You know, I don't, you know, the, the idea of, of texting people for important things, I don't like that. You know, maybe, you know, if, if you know, um, that's your understanding between you and the brother, you know, then you can text him. But I, I feel that, you know, in important situations, phone calls are necessary. Um, that's just how I feel. So will you visit him when he's sick? And if you can't, then you call him and you make dua for him. That you counsel him sincerely, that's the, the fifth right. If he asks you for advice, then you give your, your most sincere advice that you can give. And you don't refuse to give him advice. And then the, the sixth is that you attend his funeral. And so you owe this to every single Muslim, whether they are righteous or not. And, you know, we, uh, here in our time, people like to mention that some of the Sahaba would withhold these, uh, these uh, rights from people of Bid'ah. And, you know, so people would say, well, Omar, uh, Ibn Omar, anhu, he wouldn't greet the, the, the Qadariya. And this is true. However, you know, we treat this as Ibn Omar, anhu was doing it because he was a person of example and he did not want people to take it as his you know, take his greeting a person or giving him these rights as a sign of approval of his bidah and so that that was good for for ibn omar but for us we know that these are the six rights and we try to fulfill them for every muslim now if it's somebody who you know is just goes you know way out of line then yes you know th there are exceptions but in, in general we try to fulfill these rights for every muslim and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us help us with that and then you know beyond that you know we have the the uh the what are the rights of uh of companionship and brotherhood uh on the path and so this is what we are going to deal with, inshallah, over the next uh, few weeks. And so it's actually one of the largest topics, you know, uh, and, you know, that, and, and the, one of the topics which he gives uh, more time to in this book in more detail. And that gives you an idea of how important it is. And uh, so we need to listen carefully, learn from the sheikh, and try to put all of this into practice. May Allah facilitate us. I mean, it is not hidden that the duties of companionship and brotherhood and their etiquettes, which we will explain shortly if Allah so wills, are among the greatest duties and most important etiquettes. That is because they are a protection in the levels of traveling and wayfaring towards the presence of the Lord of Lords. And that is especially so in our Ahmad, Ahmadi Tijani path. Due to the words of our master, may Allah be pleased with him. Pleased with him. If someone is afflicted with neglecting the rights of his brothers, Allah will test him with neglecting the divine rights. Listen to how, how, uh, how important and how serious this is. Our Shaykh uh, Ahmed Tijani radiallahu anhu, he said, if someone is afflicted with neglecting the rights of his brothers, Allah exalted as he will test him with neglecting the divine rights. SubhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us because that anybody who neglects the divine rights has placed himself, you know, has exposed himself to Allah's punishment, you know, to, to the possibility of Allah's punishment. And so this is a slippery slope, you know, which begins with neglecting our brethren. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us afia, to give us, uh, you know, to free us of that and to, and to protect us from that, I mean. And I have heard one of his companions, one of Sheikh Ahmed Tijani radiallahu anhu, his companions, may Allah be pleased with him, saying, I heard our master and patron Sheikh 
May Allah be pleased be, be pleased with him say, uh, how eager I am to write a small book on the etiquettes of the path. He may, uh, he may Allah be pleased with him was indicating that etiquette is one of the most important and emphasized matters in the path. And that if someone adheres to etiquette in the path, he has adhered to the strongest means and the trustworthy rope. For that reason, I have placed this topic after the previous one, and I deemed it proper that I should come, it should come as an explanation to the previous chapter's contents and a supplement and, and a concluding section. Thus I say, and all help is from Allah, and upon him is our dependence. And there is no God but he, and there is no choice other than his choice. You should know that the level of companionship and brotherhood, the degree of companionship and brotherhood in the sight of Allah is a noble degree, and its status in the past is imminent and exalted. For a group, a group among the predecessors had favored it and encouraged, encouraged it and preferred it. And the vast majority of the later generations followed them in that. And among the evidences that, depend, that they depended on in their choosing it, with which they hearkened to, and upon which they founded their preference for it, is that they saw that Allah exalted as he had blessed the people of faith when he made them brothers. Allah exalted as he said, and you became by his grace brothers. And he exalted as he said, it is he who strengthened you and with his help and, and with the believers. And he brought together your hearts. The noble indication in this, uh, in this verse is evidence that companionship and brotherhood are an immense blessing and a massive grace with which Allah exalted as he has blessed whomever he wills among his believing worshipers. Those who love each other in his majesty and take each other as brothers in the pursuit of his sat satisfaction and of arriving at the present presence of his perfection. And in that verse, the exhortation, encouragement and recommendation of it is not hidden. In addition, the purified Sunnah has guided us towards that. In uh, in a Dur al Manthur, uh, the Dur al Manthur. Uh, Manthur, the author relates that Al Mardawihi narrated from Sa'ad, who narrated from Mu'adh, uh, who narrated that, that Mu'adh said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, On the day of resurrection, ten ties of kinship will be cut off, means will disappear, and all brotherhood will go away except brotherhood in Allah. SubhanAllah. We, we should read that again and understand. On the day of resurrection, ties of kinship will be cut off. What's the most important relationship in this life? What is the relationship that Allah has made next, you know, next to, um, next, next to shirk, the, the, uh, the greatest sin is neglecting it, the, 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 the relationship to parents. And that's a tie of kinship, and it will be cut off. So even the most important relationship in this life will be cut off, and all means will disappear, and all brotherhood will go away, except brotherhood in Allah. So here, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us, and may he grant us to have a brother in the path. Here, Allah is telling us that a person who has a brother in Allah you know, a, a, or, or who enters into brotherhood for the sake of Allah will have plenty of support on the day when there's no other support. And so, you know, this, this gives us an example of how important our brotherhood is with the people who seek Allah. So if we are on the path with people, we have to take that, take their, that relationship seriously. And we have to be careful of how we treat them. You know, uh, we're going to see in, uh, later on that Sheikh Ahmed Tijani, you know, he, he, 
one of the things that he advised people to do, you know, is that he. He advised people of doing thing, anything that hurts. people on his path important relationship you know because it is a relationship that will be it will be there you know in the hereafter and that is in his words exalted as he close friend uh, close close friends that day will be enemies to each other except for the righteous may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among them and in his parting advice our master Umar al Farooq May Allah be pleased with him who has been praised with the words, the real, al-haq, the truth, speaks on the tongue of Umar, and whom we have been commanded through the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to follow, uh, follow those who come after me, Abu Bakr and Umar, said, take care to live in the shade of your of sincere brothers, for they are an adornment in times of ease and a means of assistance during trials. Take care to live in the shade of your sincere brothers, for they are an adornment in the time of ease and a means of assistance during trials. What does that mean? That means that when you're in, you know, during times of blessing, then this, the brotherhood of these sincere uh, brothers, and, and you know, uh, when we talk, just, just uh, so we know, when we talk about brothers, you know, it 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 also refers to, you know, sincere sisters who are sisters to one another in the path. So it doesn't just uh, mean brothers, but uh, it refers to both. So you know, um, the the brothers are adornment in a time of ease means that in a time when you are being blessed, then the brotherhood of sincere people. Is an added blessing. Is an added blessing. And a means of assistance during trial, because a person who is sincere will never abandon his brother in, a, in his time of need. You know, and even the Prophet وسلم, commanded us not to abandon our brothers and not to turn our backs on one another. And the author of a wada from Ma'arif has narrated that Umar radiallahu anhu also said, if a man were to fast all day, pray all night, give charity and struggle in the way of Allah, yet he had not loved for the sake of Allah and hated for the sake of Allah, he would not have benefited from, from those acts at all. And that doesn't mean that, you know, if, if somebody doesn't love someone for the sake of Allah, that you know all of his actions are batted so why why act you know no what what he means is that you know um you'll get your reward for those acts but you won't get the full uh the full blessing of those acts you know without having loved someone for the sake of Allah and and you know showed anger for the sake of Allah And from the necessary outcomes of loving for the sake of Allah, exalted is he, is that one takes the person as his brother for, his, for, for Allah's sake, for his sake, for Allah's sake. That is why they have been used interchangeably. And the author of Awada from Ma'arif has also narrated with his chain of transmission from Ustad Abu Qasim al Qushayri that he said, I heard Abu Abdul Rahman al Sulami saying, I heard Abu Abdullah bin Mu'allim saying, I heard Abu Bakr at, at, at Timistani saying, keep the company of Allah. If you are unable to do that, then keep the company of someone who keeps the company of Allah so that the blessing of his company may cause you to reach Allah's company. Basically, it's saying be ever constantly aware of the presence of Allah. And if you are unable to do that, then keep the company of someone who who does so that he you know what his state will will affect you in a positive way 
He also narrated with his chain of transmission to Sheikh Abu Ja'far ja al-Haddad. May Allah exalt it as he have mercy on him that he heard Sheikh Ali ibn Sahl say, Intimacy with Allah is that you should avoid people except the people of Allah's sainthood. For intimacy with the people of Allah, Allah's sainthood is intimacy with Allah himself. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Um, these, are, these are very, very uh, deep statements that are coming from these awliya, so we should contemplate them and understand them, you know. So um, it's not saying that you should turn towards creation. It's saying that you should turn with the people of Allah towards Allah because, you know, the company of the people of Allah will help you to turn, toward, turn towards Allah in a better state. While, uh, while avoiding people and being solitary, you may miss some things that the people of Allah would, would have uh, pointed out to you. So, you know, that, that, is what, that, is, that is what this statement is saying. And then, you know, he goes on to say, and, and he also mentioned, meaning that the uh, 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 Sheikh Ali ibn Sa'il also mentioned uh, that Allah exalted as he revealed to Dawood, peace be upon him, saying, O oh Dawood, why do I see you alone in seclusion? He replied, My God, I have abandoned people for your sake. So Allah revealed to him, O oh Dawood, be astute. Look for brothers for yourself, but do not keep the company of any confidant that does not correspond to your seeking my pleasure. For he is an enemy who will harden your heart and distance you from me. So, uh, so this is a contrast, you know, we, we see that, you know, the intimacy with the people of Allah will cause us to reach intimacy with Allah, but keeping the company with people who are away from Allah will lead us away from Allah. And Sheikh Hassan Sisi, uh, may Allah have mercy on him and be pleased with him, used to say that you're either going towards Allah or going away from Allah. There's nothing neutral. So you're either moving forward or you're moving away from Allah. And there's, there's, no, there's no middle there, you know. So if we are going to be moving towards Allah, then we need to have people in our lives that are intimate with Allah. And we need to avoid people that are away from Allah. Because if we keep the company of people that are away from Allah, we aren't neutral. We're not staying where we are. We're going backwards. May Allah SWT protect us. That is why companionship, like uh, Sidi al Arabi ibn Sa'i, he continues, that is why companionship and friendship, according to the noble people, has the same rights as that of brotherhood through blood. Evi um, evidence for this is that someone has said, friendship is a bond similar to the familiar bond. Rather, the truth is that the rights of friendship and brotherhood in Allah are more important than the rights of brotherhood by blood. It was said to someone, is your brother more beloved to you or your friend? He replied, I only love my brother if he is my friend. Sheikh Saruq, may Allah be pleased with him, said in his commentary on Al-Waglisiyya, the scholars have said that close ties are of two types close ties based on religion and close ties based on familial relationship. And the former is more important than the latter. And we see this where we see that the, the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, they left their homes and they left their families to go and be with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the believers. And so that is our, our example. Uh, but they kept ties with their kin for the sake of Allah. So, uh, in Sidi al Arabi ibn Sa'i, he continues, um, Sheikh Muhyiddin, may Allah be pleased with him. And anytime we, we see Sheikh Muhyiddin in this book, uh, just to remind you, it's uh, Sheikh ibn Arabi uh, al Hatimi, may Allah be pleased with him. M uh, mentions in his Al Futuhat al Muhammadiyya that a man entered upon his Sheikh and discussed with him the meaning of the saying those closest are more deserving of one's wealth. The Sheikh responded without hesitating to, to Allah, O 
O Fulan to Allah. Meaning, those closest to Allah are more deserving of, of one's wealth. And uh, we'll, we'll get to, um, to, to what this means. Um, it, it's talking about the, the concept of hadiya, um, giving a, a monetary or giving a gift to one's sheikh or to one's brother on the path, you know, uh, for the sake of Allah. Uh, because, you know, uh, Sheikh Ahmed Ziyani, anhu, he said that, you know, a sign of sincerity is spending one's wealth. And so, um, inshallah, in the section that deals with it, we'll, we'll talk more about this. Um, but the, the Sheikh was saying that those the meaning of those closest is those closest to Allah are more deserving of one's wealth. He meant that those closest to Allah are more deserving of one's wealth than, the, than those closest through family, familial relationship. Sheikh Zarouk, may Allah be pleased with him, said that friendship is the foundation of one's religious and worldly life. Something that indicates its noble status and perfect excellence, in addition to what is understood from the sayings of these great leaders, in terms of the great benefits and tremendous dignity, blessings and benefits is that which is mentioned in Al Jaysh Al Kafi. Al Jaysh Al Kafi is a um, is a book that it is uh, is on um, is is uh, is actually uh, regarding the, the Tijani Tariqa. and uh, the the what is said in there is moreover the benefits that are sought through companionship are either religious or worldly as for worldly they are benefits such as benefiting from someone's wealth or position as for the religious benefits there are many different objectives that are included in them among them is benefiting from someone's knowledge or action among them is benefiting from someone's position by seeking to protect oneself from the harm of someone who will confuse his heart and prevent him from worship. Also among them is seeking the blessing of someone's supplication, and among them is seeking intercession, and there are many other obje objectives. So the author of Awadif and Ma'adif has mentioned, companionship brings about mutual assistance and help. Thereby the armies of the heart are strengthened. Spirits find rest by mutual disclosure and they support each other in, in turning towards the highest friend. An example of this is the physical, in the physical world is that of voices. When they are joined together, they exceed expectations. But when there is only a single voice, the objective is not obtained. It has been narrated in a traditional report that the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a single believer is strengthened by his brother. I say, uh, meaning uh, Sidi al Arabi ibn Sa'i, he, he continues, I say that in another traditional report, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, believers to, uh, to one another are like a fortified building. Its parts strengthen one another. The author of Awadif al Ma'adif has also said, among the benefits of companionship and brotherhood is that it opens one's inner senses and by it, a man obtains knowledge of different events and circumstances. I say that what he means by that, and Allah knows best, is the light is that the light of their foresight, supported by faith, is strengthened by their mutually benefiting from each other, and the flowing of the secrets of some of the some of them upon others. That is because among its benefits is that some of the inner secrets of those who are higher in station flow upon those of, of a lower station. And that is the ultimate goal and the greatest objective and greatest objective of companionship. It has been said, if someone realizes a state, those who are present with him will not be deprived. So if you reach a, a certain spiritual, spiritual state, then you will raise with you your companions. And, uh, you know, uh, as Sheikh Muhammad and Mahi Sisi said, you know, that, you know, it is by the, the spiritual states of, of, of the son can raise the rank of the father in the hereafter.
the spiritual state of the, the son can raise the rank of the father in the hereafter. And so if you reach a certain state, then your, your state will benefit anyone who has sincere love for you and who you have sincere love for. And while the lowest of grades in the station of companionship to the elect is of those who don't have anything other than their love for them, it is sufficient for them if they are not among them that they, uh, they were with them. Evidence for this is the hadith, a man is with the one he loves. Said in, uh, it was narrated in Mukhtasar Hiyal um after some discussion. Um, he said, accompany the elect, for if you cannot be among them, you will be with them. He means that one should accompany with them with love and submission so that they may be counted as, as, as with them, even if he is not among them, because a man is with the one he loves. And so, uh, um, in summary, and, and we're going to finish uh, with this paragraph, inshallah. Uh, it's a long section, so uh, we're going to finish with this paragraph, and then we'll take some questions. He says, in summary, associating with the elect, with submission and love, um, in some, uh, there is much benefit in it. Nay, associating is a great foundation for seeking benefit. For that reason, some have said, Indeed, association suffices for all other actions, while no other action suffices one from association. And we find this in the Hadith uh, where a, an Arabi came and, you know, he, um, and he said, uh, Oh, Muhammad, and, you know, like that, you know, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He yelled at, and, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, he, he um, he answered him in a similar, similarly loud voice. And uh, the companions, you know, they, they rebuked the man and they said, you know, don't you know we're not supposed to talk to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like this. And, you know, he asked, you know, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, you know, a man, you know, loves a group of people and he considers himself with them but he has not reached their level of practice of the religion. What, are, what, what is his status? And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a man will be with the one he loves. And so this is the foundation for, for this, uh, for saying that association is a great, is, 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 suffices all other actions because it takes you to the one you love, even if your actions are not equal, while actions don't suffice association. So that you're, you know, if you do the actions similar to a person who is close to Allah, then that won't necessarily take you to where he has gone. But if you love that, love that person who is close to Allah and you lack the actions that resemble his actions, you will still be in his presence and you will still be with him. And so he continues, it has been narrated that the knower of Allah exalted as he, Sidi Abdul Rahman ibn Muhammad al-Fasi, may Allah be pleased with him, said to, a compa uh, um, said to a companion of one of the saints of his time, who he had witnessed not associating with the fuqara. Not, the fuqara is a technical term for the people of, of the path, the, the students of the path, the disciples of the path. Um, and he's, he had witnessed him not associating with the fuqara. He said, what does your sheikh order you to do? He responded to glorify, glorify Allah and read. Uh, uh, Sidi Muhammad al-Fasi al said, the path is not simply glorification of Allah and reading. Rather, it is entirely association. The one who associates with the leper becomes a leper. And so uh, he, said, he, he gave a negative as an example. You know, and the opposite is true. The one who associates with the saint becomes a saint. And we ask Allah SWT to grant us that. And so we're going to uh, see if there are any questions, inshallah. And we'll continue uh, reading next week. Assalamu alaikum, Imam. Wa alaikum salam. MashaAllah, that's a very beautiful an important uh, chapter that we are learning today 
on the companion uh, on the etiquette and companionship inshallah and i think most of the time we neglect this aspect and and i think you you mention a lot from the book by say al arabi uh, ibn sa'i which is very profound inshallah i have a few question uh, imam pertaining to this uh, i received uh, one of the question is uh, i I am in the only murid of my sheikh in my town, and I do not have uh, any veteran or veteran or I mean companions of the same tariqa. And uh, I always talk to my sheikh and I call him and you know trying to connect with him. But at times I feel helpless because uh, there is no one around me. So how do I go about with this sort of situation? Mm. Inshallah, I think this also relate to what you go through in Mexico. And all that, subhanallah. Yeah, Imam, I think you're the right Imam yeah. too. So, yeah, so the thing that you have to do is to um, continue to to um, associate with your sheikh, talk to your sheikh much, um, talk to to the muris who are closest to you. So um, here in Mexico, I try to keep contact with, uh, with the murid, uh, Sidi Yusuf from Mexico City. We mm-hmm. are far away, but we, we try to keep contact Inshallah. and people should, should keep contact. And, you know, um, whenever you have the chance, visit for the sake of Allah. You know, you visit each other, you do dhikr. Uh, one of the things that is uh, paramount and that I've noticed, you know, among many of the, uh, the muris of Sheikh Mahi. Yeah. You know, and that is not, you know, uh, that is that whenever they get together, mm-hmm. you know, if it's only two of them, before they leave, they do wadifa together. Why? Because this increases the companionship, Inshallah. even though you're far away, you know. Mm-hmm. So try to visit and try to do dhikr with, with the, the people um, whenever you can. And when you're not able, then try to, you know, make phone calls, try to talk to people and talk to your sheikh you know, and, and these things will help. Um, but in reality, you know, um, eventually, you know, trying to move to where there's, you know, where, even if it's only one person trying to move and make it two people, uh, or trying to arrange so that you can be together and, you know, more, uh, would be, uh, would be helpful on the path. Inshallah, thank you, Imam. Beautifully said. Uh, we learn from you and your experience too. Inshallah. Another question pertaining to this also, uh, Imam, is that um, sometimes uh, we have friends who look down on us because we may not have uh, knowledge, and and because of this, we may not be with some of them. And how do we go about it? Like the jealousy or uh, the pride that we have in dealing with this kind of companionship. Yeah. Well, this is this is gonna this is going to come up, inshallah. Um, so one of the things <laughs> you know um, that uh, that is from the Sunnah is to give gifts. You know, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, you know. And the, the wording may not be from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the, the version I know is Tahadu, uh, Tahadu, Tahabu. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, give gifts to one another, and it, and it will increase your love. You know, and mm-hmm. another thing is not meeting all the time. You know, um, uh, so you 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 know if you if you meet like people say you know the the absence. You know, in English, we have absence makes the heart grow fonder, you know, <laughs> yeah. and this is this is this is this is a, a universal truth, you know, and, you know, don't meet all the time meet and, you know, uh, you know, if you meet, you know, two times a week, then meet one time next week so you can, you know, so that you miss one another, you know, mm-hmm. and and come together for uh, not for uh not for a lot of social reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, come together for dhikr, mm-hmm. come together for ilm, you know, come together to help each other, you know, and, and other than that, 
you know, keep your social reasons to to a minimum. Mm -hmm. You know, this this will inshallah help. You know. Inshallah. Thank you, Imam. Uh, another question, Imam, that came through to me is someone who is not in Tarika but is trying to find a path. So he's asking, uh, in searching for the right companionship that you mentioned about how uh, if one is sincere to another, it benefits each other, even progress on the spiritual path. How does one find such, such companionship when you are actually seeking for it? What should I do? In other words, it's like he's asking you what are the ways to find this sort of companionship. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's really uh, has to do with finding the right path for you. You know, um, it doesn't really. So um, there are there are ways to to get baraka from people, you know, and you may feel the baraka of uh, companionship, mm -hmm. but then you enter the tariqa and Allah tests you, you know, and, and you know we don't know when Allah will test us, but He may test you mm -hmm. with not feeling the baraka of brotherhood that you felt before you took the tariqa. Yeah. And so, or and, and that was goes for any path. So um, the the thing is, is it, it should all be for Allah. We should enter the path to seek Allah. Mm -hmm. And the brothership, the brotherhood, is both a consequence of entering the path of Allah, and a means to traveling that path. Yeah. And so it, we we shouldn't really look for the brotherhood. That shouldn't be what we should be looking for. We should be looking for a path that is, is connected and can lead us to Allah. And we enter it for Allah. And then we treat all of his people with the rights of, of brotherhood on the path. You know, this is, this is, this is uh, the right way to go about it. Inshallah. Thank you. Very beautiful. Said, um, full of wisdom. Inshallah. So another, I think this is the last question and I have to, for today. Um, Imam, um, I'm in a group of uh, companionship with some people. They are nice and uh, I learn a lot from their presence and their companionship, especially knowledge. But sometimes I felt that, uh, I felt that they, one of them is a bit harsh on me because I may not be what they think of me and I also I mean he said like I'm having anxiety and sometimes I feel like not talking to them for a while is it okay in that particular manner um so if they're your brothers on the path then you can't stop talking to them um but you can reduce the amount that you speak to them so you can, you know, just you can withdraw a little bit, but it, it's healthier, both spiritually and, you know, and and in general to actually talk to the people about what's bothering you, you know, and then if you can't, you know, if if if, if it continues, then, you know, you might want to seek some the companionship of someone else. And, you know, we, we don't, so everybody in the tariqa is mm -hmm. technically our brother. And so they, they deserve, you know, elevated rights, you know, from us. However, not everybody in the tariqa is gonna be close to us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, it still applies that the ruh, the arwah, the spirits are, you know, um, are, con are soldiers in, in different armies you know and so some people in on your path may not be from the same presence that you are from you know because the paths they have different presences and you know without getting into a lot of deep stuff you know they have different presences and different um different places or, or different way stations and so some people are in one presence and some people are in another and while you know, you may want to be with some people, you know, it may not be the case that, that they are for you. Okay. And so you should seek out bre brothers, you know, and, and keep close to brothers whose state matches yours. Uh, 
-hmm. You know, just as the, the Sheikh uh, already explained that Allah said that Dawood uh, don't don't keep the company of people whose state don't match yours. You know, so you have to, you know, you have to, to seek out people who, who, you know, and everybody, you give them the rights of brothers on the path, mm -hmm. but you keep people close to you who have the same goal and the same, uh, the same, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, the same energy as you. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Thank you, Imam. Such a, uh, another beautiful explanation and advice. I think we need this, uh, we're all learning, you know, from time to time. And I think sometimes, like what you say, we don't see what's coming and we're not able to realize. And that's one of our learning from your online class. We, we, we learn now so much about dealing with each other and understanding with for each other. And uh, yeah. I think this is the last question. And we thank you, Imam, once again. Every week, every Saturday, inshallah. You know, oh, yeah. uh, may Allah put lots of barakah in you, and uh, may Allah love you, and may the Prophet love you, and uh, may we continue to benefit from your your class, your online class. Yeah. So before we end this, uh, Imam, can uh, you make a closing du'a for all of us in this blessed month of Zul Hijjah? Amin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul hula wa haru Allahu s-samad alam yari wa nam yada wa nam yakul lahu kuwa nahad. Allahumma salli ila salli ma hamlil fatih li ma'awliqa wa la khatima wa sallam wa qadna salli al-haqib 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 al-haqib
our number 9670471 9670471 to register or inquiry your korban and now with this we say sama control ke tu see you tonight inshallah may allah suffice our need and bless us with such gathering even though it's online assalamualaikum <laughs>